Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the NZXT Function Mini TKL. This is NZXT's first venture into the gaming keyboard arena with a proper modular gaming keyboard. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I took the Mini TKL and upgraded it with some different key switches and an entirely different look and feel, as you can see here. So stick with me as I unbox and undo this keyboard and show you all the highlights of it take all the key switches out and sort them out for completely different ones and change the look and feel but first i want to talk to you a bit about the keyboard and this is one of three variants of the function keyboard from nzxt that includes a full-size variant a 10 keyless and this mini tkl which is a compact keyboard that takes a 10 keyless layout so 87 keys and crams it into a tiny frame that's more like a 65% keyboard so a lot smaller a lot more compact and yet it has all the keys that you could want still present on the keyboard which is obviously wonderful it includes the directional arrows and a lot of other things that you'll see as we go through here also is hot swappable and has a standard bottom row layout which means you can do crazy things like this where I've taken Corsair's PBT double shot keycaps and installed them on an NZXT keyboard for a pretty nice look and feel I think. Now the Function Mini TKL is the more affordable of the lineup coming in at £100 sterling about $120. And the 10 keyless version is $110 or $130. And then the full size goes up to $150. So the full size is the most expensive of the lineup. And in this one, I'm obviously talking about the Mini TKL and my experiences with it and what it's like to use. As you can see already, it's a very nice looking keyboard with a really nice setup. All of these keyboards, if you're in the right region, also available through NZXT's build, which means that you can personalize them before they even arrive. So you can pick and choose what key caps you want, what key switches you want, and even things like cabling as well. So there's lots of things you can do there if you have access to that service. If you're in America, for example, you can easily get it. As standard though, the standard one comes with hot swappable Gatter and Red switches, which are basically very similar to Cherry MX Red, so the linear switches, and I'll leave all the specifications in the description, but the point of interest here is that they're hot swappable, which means that you can take them out and swap them out for your own key switches, and they'll fit both three and five pin variants, so you can actually choose from a variety of nice key switches. Now included in the box, obviously you get the keyboard itself, a USB-C cable, which is detachable, which means that's also upgradable and both a key cap puller and the key switch puller as well. Now, when I got these out of the box, I was thoroughly impressed by the quality of the key switch puller because it's a really solid piece of kit here. You can see it here essentially looks like a big pair of tweezers and it is very solid and a nice premium finish to it. The whole package is actually very premium. This is an impressive keyboard. I was really impressed with it out of the box in a number of ways. Obviously they've included everything you need apart from the extra crease key switches that I'm going to be including in here, but you have everything you need to get going and the setup to be able to remove the key switches immediately. But also you've got a really nice looking keyboard. Now not many of the big name gaming brands offer hot swappable key switches at this point. So it's pretty interesting straight away. Some other interesting highlights are, you will see on the left hand side that it has a volume wheel and some other buttons. You also see that there's some function buttons buried at the function row. And also it has a very interesting layout. I noticed immediately that the top F buttons, for example, were very close to the standard number buttons. And here you can see it alongside the G915 TKL from Logitech, which is obviously a 10 keyless keyboard as well, but that's a standard size. And you'll just see how different, how compact the mini TKL is by comparison. Now I'm going to leave a proper clip of me typing on this keyboard so you can hear some of that at the end of the video but i'll be quiet for a few seconds just so you can hear a sample of it unsurprisingly these gatter and red key switches aren't pleasant enough to type on and for the most part it's pretty decent keyboard with this sort of layout custom keyboard snobs might well turn their nose up at it but as a gaming keyboard goes, pretty nice. There is a little bit of rattle in the spacebar and the end key and the other keys that need stabilization, but otherwise it's a reasonably nice experience out of the box and most gamers will enjoy it. 
there are some interesting highlights in the overall design of it. Now, it is built with an onboard memory. So, for example, pressing the function key that you can see on the right-hand side and then pressing 1 to 4 will swap between the four different profiles that you can program within NZXT's CAM software. F1 to F4 also has multiple different profiles in terms of lighting. So there's hardware level lighting that you can switch as well. And I'll show you some of the RGB in a minute. I already said there's some buttons on the left hand side of the keyboard alongside the volume wheel. And you have a mute button as the first one. Then there's a Windows lock button to stop the Windows key working when you're playing games. And then a brightness button to adjust the RGB lighting. Now you can see that we have a USB-C connection on the left hand side there. So you can plug in a USB-C cable. And that obviously gives you some customization options here. But here you can see it just plugged in immediately. You get this nice sort of white backlit lighting. Obviously this variant that I have here has a white backplate to it and that nicely reflects the RGB lighting as well. You can go through four different brightness levels of RGB and even on this heavy lighting for video you can see that it shines really nicely. Those are ABS plastic keycaps so they're not PVT double shot but they do let through a nice amount of light and they're also a reasonable material as well. I'll show you a close-up shot of them in a minute but you can just see how the RGB lighting bleeds through and the overall look and feel of it just straight out of the box a very nice looking keyboard now one of the highlights to having the stuff on the left hand side the volume wheel for example is that it means that you can do things like easily adjust volume with your pinky for example or just move your left hand away it's really nicely thought out because a lot of keyboards have this sort of stuff on the right which means you'd have to take your hand off your gaming mouse and in the middle of playing games you don't want to be doing that one downside that i have found though is that i like to shift my keyboard around on my desk quite a bit I'm often accidentally pressing one of those three buttons below the volume wheel. So the Windows lock key, the mute button and the brightness button on the keyboard. One of those is more problematic than the others. Obviously accidentally muting your audio is kind of a pain. But you can see you can press the function key and go between the different RGB lighting modes with F1 to F4. And those are hardware level. So you can program this keyboard in a per key RGB illumination within the software and that's NZXT's CAM software. And there's actually a surprising amount of customization in here. So it has macro capabilities. As I said, you can have four different profiles that you can store on board. You program the stuff within the CAM software and then it's automatically on there and then you can just switch between them and you don't even need CAM running either. So there's loads and loads of flexibility here. They've really thought this keyboard out immediately. There's very few things to pick holes in from what I've seen so far. And my overall experience is one of being impressed with it as well. It's a nice looking keyboard. You can see there's some nice reactive RGB on it. You can set like a base layer of a single color or a single effect and then put a reactive layer on top of it. So when you're typing, you get this nice little RGB reaction from it where light beams outwards. And even with that sort of standard purple finish on it, it looks really good. It's nice to type on and it's been nice to play around with too. I'm finding very few holes to pick in it. One thing you will notice is the mini TKL version doesn't come with a wrist rest of any sort. Apparently the 10 keyless one and the full size one do come with a magnetic wrist rest. That would be quite appealing. And I'd probably go for a full size TKL rather than this compact version. There's something about how close the function row is to the top of it make nags at my eyes, but it is a very nice looking setup. Now, this is what I was talking about with the USB cable. Here I have a custom coiled loop USB cable that I purchased from kbdfans.com and it happily happens to be purple so it fits nicely into the NZXT theme by complete accident because I bought this cable ages ago before they even announced this keyboard but it sits really nicely and fits with the build and obviously you can also customize a lot of other things. One of the first things I want to do is obviously remove the keycap so you can see how easy it is to do with the puller as I make a hash of it, but basically it has two little notches on there and then you can just tug at the keycaps and see what's going on underneath. A close up look at the ABS plastic and you'll see it's not too bad. The lettering on it is very nice. It has a good quality to it. There's not too many problems in terms of the overall build quality. I think it's, they've done a solid job here and it's a nice looking setup. These are also reasonably comfortable keycaps. You can see the slight matte finish on them, which means 
they're pleasant on the fingers. Now the switch pulling process is really straightforward as well. This is a hot swappable keyboard, which means you can take the keys out while it's plugged in without any problems. And you can see I've pulled one out here. The standard Gatter and Reds come with three pins. So it has a standard plastic pin in the middle and then the two copper ones, which are the ones that need the contact for both the RGB lighting and for sending the actuation through. They're nice enough and they're linear red switches so they're decent enough they'll last for 50 million key presses and they will do the job and they do have a good actuation point on them so nice and quick they're good for gaming purposes but if you want to change them out you can easily do that and as i said you have the option to go for five pins as well one of the things to bear in mind if you do remove them is that there aren't any spares included in the box you can see that i've taken one out here then i'll put it back again and I've bent the pins a little bit. This is remarkably easy to do. If you've never dealt with a swappable keyboard before with swappable switches, then just be warned that it is really easy to accidentally bend these pins. So get some tweezers, make sure you have some tweezers on the hand for when you're doing this. It is easy enough to bend the pins back into shape and then you can put them back in again. Now I have also purchased a separate key switch tester which basically has a load of different key switches on it so you can purchase something like this if you're not sure what key switches you want and what you should purchase you can get one something like this you can just test out what it sounds like and what it feels like before you commit to buying a whole lot of key switches because obviously you're buying 87 keys and that's not a cheap investment and for the purposes of this i happen to have some Zelios v2 switches and some Gateron yellows and these are renowned for being wonderful switches and pleasant on both the ears and the fingers but still reacting really nicely they're more expensive than the Gateron reds for sure but for comparison purposes I'm sticking them in the escape and function row just to sort of test out what they're like so you can see a quick test of that and also just the process for removing the switches really easy you just basically need to grab it at the top and bottom and then tug very gently to pull it out and then you just push the other ones back in making sure they're facing in the right direction so put the keycaps on to get an idea of what it sounds like because the switch itself is very different with a keycap on and i'll be quiet again just so you can hear what these sound like Now, if you want to go really crazy and upgrade your switches even more, you can get a little kit that you can use where you can basically take the entire thing apart and lube it up. There are various videos on how to lube your own key switches, and I did one previously with the Royal Kludge keyboard where I took some Novel Keys cream switches apart, so I'll show you a little bit of that. But basically, this tool pushes several clips out of place, and then you can see you can take the switch apart and then you get some lube and you can lube the internal parts of it and that makes the action a little bit smoother and a little bit quieter and a bit more pleasant on the fingers as well. Doing this requires a lot of effort and a lot of time because it does really take quite a bit of time to lube each and every switch. You lube an 87, there's still a lot to do. You have to go through the process of lubing the leaves and the shaft and round various parts of the internals including the spring and other bits take them all apart and put them all back together again and taking care to make sure you put them back the right way and other things so i'm not going to go into a great deal of depth on this but i will link to some other videos where you can check out and see how to do it and what bits you should do it with there's also the complexity about what switches you should lube because you shouldn't lube clicky switches for example but if you're using linear switches it can really be beneficial so here you can see a clip of the novel keys creams and i will say that i did this on a royal clutch keyboard and it was worth the effort because it really makes it sound a bit more fantastic and it just feels a lot more fantastic as well so it really adds value to the keyboard and the overall use of it but it is a mission it does take a long old time you can see even just a little sample of doing just one switch is a delicate process a careful one and one that takes quite a bit of effort to do a lot of faffing so if you're impatient or lazy then you probably won't want to do this process you can however purchase pre-lubed switches so there are some variants of key switches out there that will come lubed from the factory and that makes life a little bit easier 
but there are people who say even then you won't get the same quality but what it does mean is that you're really upgrading those Gatron switches with something of your own personal preference and also something with a personal touch. So the next step of this process is obviously removing these keycaps. Now, as I said, these aren't terribly bad keycaps. They are a nice looking, nice enough looking, and they do sort of complement the back plate. But removing them means that we can upgrade for PBT, which means they'll last a bit longer, but it also means you can customize the look of the feel of a keyboard. Now, this is a standard bottom rollout, which means that most keycaps will fit on it and that's worth bearing in mind too so here you can see the Zelios v2s they're purple sweet switches which is a nice fit because they just fit in the nzx t theme and then i'm using corsair's pbt double shot keycaps i've done a video on these previously and these look really nice i've just added two kits here together basically i've got the green and the white one one thing of note is there are some issues even though it's a standard bottom rollout it does fit well this keyboard does have an F13 key, which is pretty unusual. So I've ended up using two F12 keys. If you're really eagle-eyed, you'll spot that. Also, there's an NZXT key on the keyboard usually. And obviously that doesn't come in the Corsair kit. So I've used a star key instead. So it's not a perfect layout. But if you're not too picky about it, I think this is a worthy change to the whole setup. Now, one thing that you will find if you do do this process and remove a lot of the switches and replace them is that you'll probably end up bending some of the pins in the process and then the switches just won't work. And one way to tell this, obviously, if you keep it plugged in while you're doing it, you'll be able to see the lighting doesn't react to your presses. So obviously I have a reactive lighting on at the moment. And when I press the switch, the rest of the light should change. And you can see I've done that here and it's working. Another thing to do is to open up Notepad, for example, start pressing the buttons and you'll see which ones aren't working. During my installation, things seemed like they were going well. And you sort of get an idea of when you're putting the key switches in, whether they're actually clicking into place properly or whether they're not. If they don't make a sound, they probably aren't. If they make too much noise, then they've probably bent the pin at the same time. So you do need to be really careful. And it's worth purchasing extra keys above and beyond 37 because it is very easy to break a pin accidentally and then render that switch useless which is obviously a frustration but it's easy enough to change them out as well on to take a switch out and change them fix the pin and put it back in again and then the end result it comes off being worthwhile this took me a good couple of hours to do this take all the switches out to lube potentially if you're going to lube that'll take a lot longer and to obviously then put them back and then put all these keycaps on top but you can see the lighting is a lot nicer now these are obviously pbt as well the double shot means they'll last longer they'll look nicer for a longer time it does mean that it costs a lot more obviously this is a reasonably affordable keyboard that i've now made a lot more expensive with much more expensive switches and a more expensive keycap set but I think it adds to the overall effect of it and also makes it look a lot better. However, I will say that this is a really nice keyboard with a lot going for it. And I think the fact that you can even do this speaks to an excellent job that NZXT has done with this initial keyboard. They've looked and seen what people are after and they've crafted something really nice. You can customize the look and feel with build before you even start. So there are options in what you want to do and the keyboard that you end up with and there's a lot of choice and it's really nice to see a company doing this because that means that hopefully other companies will start to do it too maybe we'll start seeing things from razor corsair steel series where you get swappable switches because that's not something that a lot of the big brands offer it is something that usually you need to turn to the cheaper brands or look at a custom keyboard build and that becomes a lot more expensive so hats off to nzxt for doing this and hopefully you found this video interesting and enjoyable. Stick with me to the end to hear some typing and what it sounds like as standard and with the new keycaps on. This has been the Baroque Prawn. Thanks for watching.
This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.